Before we get into what drives growth, I think it's important to see what effect capital growth has on your overall investment returns. The following table shows the effect of a range of compound growth rates on a $500,000 investment over 10, 20 and 30 years. For the sake of this exercise, I'll focus on the 20 year column. Depending on your age and your personal circumstances, of course, I'd consider 20 years a good buy and hold time frame for investment property. If over the next 20 years your investment achieved only 1% growth, then ignoring the buy and sell costs and the net yield, you'd make a net profit of $110,000. If you're lucky enough to achieve 10% growth, then you'd make a net profit of well over $2.8 million. These are extreme examples of course, but there's many suburbs around Australia that have had double digit growth rates over the last 20 years. However, the average growth rate of every suburb across Australia over the last 20 years is estimated to be around 5% per annum. Now you'll see that if over the next 20 years, your investment property achieves just 1% under the national average, and your brother-in-law achieves just 1% above average, then he would earn over half a million dollars more net profit than you would. A bit of pill to swallow at fam family barbecues. But that's the difference between 4% and 6% growth over 20 years. So you can see that even small differences in growth rates mean huge differences in profit when measured over the long term. Now that we know what sort of impact capital growth can have on our investments, let's look at what drives capital growth. We've all heard the catch cry location, location, and location certainly is a large part, but not the only part of what drives capital growth. But what does this mean and what is it about location that's important? Before I answer that, I'd like to share some research with you. The following diagrams show growth rates in a number of suburbs within Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane over the last 10 years to the end of 2016. As with all data analysis, there'll always be outliers. However, generally you can see a high correlation between suburbs being closer into the CBD and having higher growth rates. There is definitely a pattern here. And this makes sense as for each one kilometer ring that you go out of the city, there's an exponential amount of supply or future supply opportunities available. On the demand side of the equation, it turns out that employment is one of the main growth drivers. As most of us don't like to spend hours every day getting to work, and a good proportion of our jobs are in the CBD. Other demand side growth drivers include access to transport nodes, hospitals, schools, universities, restaurants and entertainment or lifestyle amenity. All property investments need both an increase in demand and some sort of constraint on supply for them to actually increase in value. Most city fringes have an abundance of land available, which tends to keep prices comparatively low in those areas. The Reserve Bank of Australia have recently stated in a white paper on housing prices that the premium paid or the gap between prices of inner suburbs and outer suburbs is expected to grow exponentially over the next 20 years, mainly due to the baby boomers who are no longer able to maintain their house on the quarter acre block and are downsizing to apartment living. These baby boomers also want access to essential services such as hospitals, entertainment and lifestyle amenity. As part of the July 2017 budget reforms, retirees are now also receiving tax incentives to downsize. This is just one example of demographic shifts that will have an impact on the demand for inner city living. Immigration and migration rates, the millennials and the cost of housing will also have an impact. Download the Ultimate Guide to Property Investment ebook for more examples of demographic trends in Australia. Now there's other smaller cities and regional areas that appear to have similar growth drivers but historically haven't performed well over the long term. This is usually because they're heavily reliant on one or two specific industries to drive demand, such as mining, tourism, defence, etc., and tend to exhibit boom and bust type characteristics. They may have performed well over short periods of time, but don't have all the growth drivers to achieve good, consistent, long-term returns like our capital cities do. All of these things are no surprise to international investors, but Australia has had a bit of a love affair with land for generations. Okay, so we know that the major capital cities tend to be more consistent in their growth rates and enjoy higher growth closer to the city without actually being in the city. But that's not the end of it. 
we have to look at other factors that have positive or negative effects on the suburb or on the actual property, such as infrastructure plans or rezoning. And we'll discuss this in more detail in the next module. A growth factor that is not a consequence of location is the property's point of difference or buyer appeal. When we go to sell the property and realize our profit, we want to appeal to the owner occupier because they make up about 70% of all buyers in the marketplace. So standard of finishes, views or aspect, floor plans and other design features all contribute to the owner occupier pay more for your property than the one down the road. But let's not forget about the buyer who's an investor because we'd like to appeal to her also so that we attract 100% of the marketplace to get the best price for our property. Investors are going to be very interested in the certainty of the asset's ability to generate income into the future. So yes, yield is an important part of a property's growth prospects. And this makes sense as every investment's capital value is intrinsically linked to its ability to earn future income. The more certain the income, the higher the capital that will be risked to attain it. So in summary, if it's growth you're seeking, there may be some pockets that defy historical trends and have short-term spurts of high growth. However, if you're a long-term investor and just want to play it safe, you may want to stay close to the CBDs of the major capital cities in what we call the blue chip suburbs, especially if you're trying to build a portfolio of multiple properties. Trying to pick the next hotspot is almost impossible and even if you get it right, over the long term the suburb may not perform up to par. One bad decision in this area can impede your overall portfolio growth for many years.